Come on all in. All right, look at this, guys. So cool. Well, there's here a lot going on in here, but it's all about Gila monsters. They're pretty gentle critters. They're venomous. They but... also have an incredible face. What? Yeah. That is gorgeous. Man, this is incredible here at the Bruggen household. Uh, last we saw him, we were at the St. Augustine Alligator Farm where he is the director, um, but he's also an avid herper. You're a uh, lifelong reptile lover. Oh yeah, I started collecting snakes when I was three. Okay, <laughs> um, and like myself, he got lucky enough to link up with the local Aquascape certified uh, contractor and here it is. This is your recreation pond. I know, this, it's my backyard. It's incredible. <laughs> so guys, you know, John is a big fan of the Southwest. You said you used to visit your grandmother out there, is that right? Yeah, my grandmother gave me my first cactus. We were living in St. Louis, Missouri. She was a fan of cactus and gardening as a general. So I, I got hooked on cactus and stamp collecting because of my grandmother. And then she retired and moved out to Arizona. I go visit her out there. Oh. And this is kind of a, looks like, you know, without the running water, it looks like her backyard. It's this really is nice. absolutely just astounding, man. And uh, so just talk to me a little bit about what makes this feature so different uh, from probably the other features you'd see in Florida. I mean, this, you really had a lot going on with the soil and everything. Well, so I wanted the desert and yeah. even the people who were trying to help us build this we had a lot of people out here helping yep. they they're used to building tropical enclosures so they were running around in my yard and sticking ferns yes and you're freaking out <laughs> no no i don't want that yeah. desert. and so uh after they left we really uh got in here removed the ferns and uh started making it our own and so i created the soil the soil is made out of a bunch of different things so i wanted it to look like i walked out in the desert in arizona so there's yellow sand and baseball clay and uh, rocks from our local stone plus uh, and mix it all together to make something that made me feel like a desert yeah that's really cool so guys he had to mix it all and then wheelbarrow it in and kind of disperse it uh throughout the entire backyard um but all these different cactus and then really beautiful succulents too that i kind of zoned in on uh, just to give this the desert ecosystem that he was looking for and look we even got spiders now They're not from that. They're not from the southwest. Those are uh, native Florida <laughs> Those spiders maybe But spiders. you did put a couple of collared lizards in here. Yeah, so we, we won't see them this afternoon It's kind of cloudy, but there's three male collared lizards and they you know it, They have plenty of natural place to hide and they do just that when they want to when the dog goes by they yeah. all run off uh, and then, uh, you know, I can't do anything like everybody else. So the fish we picked are kind of interesting too. There's some normal little goldfish in there to cycle the pond and add some color. But uh, we also just got in some archer fish. Wow. And archer fish are the coolest thing. They eat mostly insects and they, uh, they're set up so that they can spit water. And if they see a fly or a spider that's out of the water, they can spit water at it, knock it into the water, and gobble it up. In fact, I think I see some of those goldfish you were talking about. Yeah. They're in there right and now. There's two archer fish. Yeah, that's uh, them, right? Heading right up the edge of this rock. Yeah, look at that. They're tiny. I don't, guys, I don't think you can see them, but I don't have my waterproof case on my uh, uh, GoPro. Uh, they were but right there's, there. that is awesome. They're, they're just kind of zooming around. Uh, very cool, man. And you guys, this is the wetland here. There's Ed and Greg from Aquascape. Uh, this is their design, um, but it's a huge wetland filter. And then, of course, the water just comes down. And you, what you have is crystal clear water. And what are you, only a few weeks uh, it's been in, right? Maybe two weeks, a week and a half? Uh, no, I think we're closer to four weeks. Now. Are we now a month? All right, very cool. Um, but that's not all we're going to do today. I just wanted to show this off. Right now, John is going to take us to uh, see another... Uh, southwestern reptile that I think you guys are going to be psyched on because of course you're not just you know the director of the gator farm <laughs> you're an avid enthusiast sure and uh what do you got in that in that building over there well, we call that the Gila den oh. so it is exclusively set up for Gila monsters and you don't mind bringing us in there do you no, we can take a look all right let's go check this out this is really cool so this is my first time to John's house. We've known each other for some years. Um, and you know, I've always had a good relationship with the folks at the Gator Farm. 
So I'm really psyched to, uh, to kind of check this out, man. I mean, you got really a cool and unique property. He's got chickens and he's, you're really inspired by the Southwest though. It's so cool <laughs> to, what everyone's into. Um, you know, for me, I, I grew up in New York. I always wanted to be in a tropical place. I knew I'd wind up in Florida, like most New Yorkers wind right. up down here in South Florida. <laughs> We're actually in North Florida right now, but this is really cool. So as per the, you know, Florida Fish and Wildlife regulations, uh, the, the, all these signs have signs. to be on the building. We got locks. We have to have a double entrance. Yep, so that's we right. That set up here, uh, and so uh, go from one door to Beautiful. the next. Beautiful. Well done. And this is what it entails, you know, if you want to keep these species here in Florida. Very cool. May I? Come on. All in. right. Look at this, guys. So cool. Very, very nice. We also have the filmer from good old Earthworks hanging out. He's making a video as well, but so. So there's a lot going on in here, but it's all about Gila monsters. So okay. when I decided to build the building, it was in the middle of COVID. Okay. And I said, I discussed it all out. And I said, I want an eight foot tub in the middle okay. where I can pair Gila monsters up and watch them from anywhere in the room okay. and see if they're fighting or they're breeding or whatever. And every stock tub in florida was sold out because people were oh. stuck at home and they were making swimming pools out of them oh get out so of I here i couldn't find one i had notices on facebook marketplace and i was looking anywhere on the internet for them. couldn't find one couldn't find one and i was getting panicky because once the building is up i couldn't fit the tub in here right it's not going to fit in the door oh my gosh. <laughs> and so yeah. i finally found a guy online who had just posted it for sale and uh I was, you know, contacted him immediately and said, I want to buy that. He said, yeah, you and everybody else. I had no idea these things were worth so much. And I said, well, you know, I'll, I'll come as soon as I can. I, he says, it's yours. Just, you know, I'll that hold it awesome. for you. And I get there and told him what I was going to do with it. And he was so nice. He said, that's cool. Just take it. <laughs> you know, he, did, you, he didn't sell it to you? No, he let me have it. Oh, that's awesome, man. So, so, so who's in here at the moment? So there's nobody actually okay. in here now. There's a replica of a yeah. horny toad, which I'll, eventually I'll have some of those out in that screened-in area as well. Awesome. And I have a couple short tunnels where they can just go under and feel like they're under, but you can still see where they are. Right, very cool. And then cool. I designed this one so they go down this tunnel and end up inside this cooler, and then I awesome. can get a hold of them when I'm Well ready. done. Yeah, that's really nice. I love it. So this is basically just so you can give them some enrichment, give them an opportunity to possibly pair up because you want to breed them? Yeah. And and the Gila monsters are hard to sex. And so you can't just flip them over and look at their tail and know whether you have a male or female. And so if you put them together, behavior-wise, you start to realize, okay, gotcha. that, that, those guys aren't getting along. Maybe you got two, two males, males or something like that. Interesting, And man. so they're housed individually currently. And see who's the most obvious to grab a hold of here this cage i built when i was in my 20s when really? i first got a gila monster i had a gila monster live for over 30 years really uh in my care and live mostly in this enclosure what was it about oh my gosh what was it about gila's that um drew you to them i think there's a lot of things about reptiles in general that drew me to them and that's you know there's kind of this element of unknown once you know a certain amount about reptiles you're a little bit more elite than some of the people around you, uh, including your schoolmates and so forth. It was a very early thing for me. Uh, I, I was probably my mother who gave, who caught the first snake for me when I was three, but, but I brought home a snake, I recall, around five years old. And, and she, instead of saying, oh, snake, put it, get it away, she said, let's put it down and let's go get a book and see what it is because I don't know what it is right. and I don't know if it's dangerous. But very calm about yeah. it and very educational about it. And then I had a book. And a book of snakes of the world, right? And that was I it. Know I was kind of like, oh it. my gosh, yeah. I gotta see that. I gotta see that. And so there's so many cool things. I, I like Gila monsters because they're this desert creature. I'm kind of in love with the desert anyway, but they're pretty gentle critters. They're venomous, uh, and so a lot of people think of them kind of like a rattlesnake, but their venom is really just about defense okay so they're running around the desert eating things like quail eggs and maybe some baby mice if they find them uh and get most of their food from eggs or other reptile eggs even store fat in their tail 
And then uh, they're kind of kind of living underground. They kind of hide out for a lot of the months of the really hot summer. So they're not really aggressive animals. They don't chase things down. Uh, they're not dangerous. The word monster really comes uh, from people that were afraid of them when they first decided, okay, we found this thing. And, and it seems like some people are getting hurt if they get bit by it. And, and thus the monster name. They but. also have an incredible face. Oh, I love them. They have a really and unique face. Look at that, guys. And what's unique in my mind about them over almost all other reptiles is that babies look like adults. And so if you show me a photo of a baby Gila monster and there's no context, it's hard to tell what size it is. Which is, you know, and it's funny, years ago in all the books you and I probably read growing up, they would all, always would say um, that reptiles are perfect replicas of the adults. And right. that's not always true no, at all. Like crocodilians. Most, most of them have much bigger different. eyes. Right. Their head doesn't fit the body. Right. They grow into all that. Yeah. But I'll, I'll show you a little baby Gila monster okay. in a minute. And, and it's hard without context to really understand. Yeah. Well, you know, I was out west. I was in Phoenix, Arizona. We were at a turtle and tortoise preservation group field trip. And we went to a gentleman, uh, uh, Bob Bloom's house. Who's oh, a big cool. sulcata guy? Uh -huh. Running around the backyard, we found I found my first Gila monster <laughs> in in C2. It was in someone's backyard, much smaller than this. Oh, nice. So it must have been a juvenile. Yeah. But yeah, they're just um, they're protected out west. Yes. Um, so you're not supposed to touch them. You're not supposed to handle them at all. Right. You can get in trouble. Similar to if you were molesting a gator or the, a. Uh, there's a lot a of similarities gopher. between these and alligators. They even have a nuisance Gila monster program. Get in out of here. So if you got one and it's in your backyard and you're worried about your kid. There, there's a Gila monster wrangler that'll come get it away from They're you. one of the iconic desert animals, oh, for in my sure. opinion. I mean, you if know? you're going to talk about what reptile represents the desert southwest, it's rattlesnakes and Gila the monsters. Gila monster. That is, and it is a beautiful animal also. Um, just really gorgeous. Uh, years ago, I went to Pro Exotics, and they were doing a work with Gila monsters, Robin Marklin and Chad uh -huh. Brown, and they were trying to breed them for color. Yes. You know, they were really trying to work with them because there is some variation to these guys. Yeah, I'll show you one that's got a little bit different color. Okay. Sorry about that no worries. horrible noise. You built it when you were 20, man. Yeah. It's a, that <laughs> thing's old, there's man. There's a rock in the ground. Oh, I hear you. And so these are... So this is a youngster that is a little, uh, is one of those line bred animals that's got a little bit more for color. Okay. What? <laughs> oh, I'm kind of colorblind, but I can see this. Yeah. That is gorgeous. Man. It's a stunner. Oh, Even nice. some color in the eyelids, which you you never see. Okay. And a lot of beautiful, uh, just you know, reduced pattern in this animal. And it's, you're not worried, I mean, about a bite, or you seem pretty so, calm around them. you know, you kind of get used to, just like working around crocodilians or monitors, you kind of understand their swing radius okay. and how upset they can get. Uh, you know, I'd never tell a novice to go pick up a Gila monster, for Copy. sure. Uh, but... You know, this animal can only envenomate you with its its mouth, its head, so its tail or its body is not dangerous. And if you do that to it, it can't swing its head in either direction. Gotcha. One of the cool tools I use is meant for uh, fishing equipment. It's meant, it's a fishing rod holder. You stick okay. this in the sand and it holds, oh, that's holds fantastic. the rod. Yeah. But it, if you put it on either side of a Gila monster's head, it's not pinning him, it's not hurting him, but he can't swing it. It restricts him. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool, man. The other cool thing I noticed about you is, as for what you're into, is you've become very focused <laughs> on the animals that you enjoy. Yeah, so, you, you don't, you're not a baseball card collector. No, you don't right. have every reptile in the world. Look, you've I work on. at a place that has every yeah. species of crocodilian, and I love that. Yeah. And we're famous for it. But even we understand that there's no point in having a posty stamp collection of crocodilians if you're not doing all the conservation that needs to go with them. Right? Gotcha. We can't just go get more. We have to be breeding them. We have to be supporting their conservation in the wild. And so all of that is important to us. But my focus, I've done a lot of cool reptiles in, in my life. And I've, I've had some neat collections. I've bred every color of corn snake there is. I've had all the cool king snakes, but when it came down to it, I, I had this Gila monster for 30 years and, and he, was, he was probably, it was my longest relationship, honestly. <laughs> I mean, he went, went through family and wives and whatever. And so he, he, he was important to me enough to, to say, okay, I'm gonna really focus on doing that one thing correctly. Cool. You know, really cool. It, well. it shows. I mean, your passion for it, your knowledge base, you know, just the intricacies that only come, you, you understand things that only come from years of working with an animal. And reptiles, you know, people write them off. 
I, as stupid agree. animals. And agree. Like, because we do, most people, like you said earlier, you know, you've become an elite just because you went, uh, you scratched more than the surface. That's all it takes. And once you do that, you, and you spend time with these animals, you see that there's a lot more happening. And that's what I think I, I always love to convey to people that watch the channel is we need to give these animals the just do they deserve. Sure. And I love interviewing people like you. I love coming here <laughs> and you. sharing that because I get a wealth of information. Everyone out there is probably going to be really excited about this video because we are learning a great deal about Gila monsters. And there's just the little nuances that only come from the amount of time you spend. Yeah, for me, there's a, there's a puzzle to it. I, I'm a puzzle guy. Yeah, I kind of like to yeah. think things through. And, and you know, most snakes I've been able to breed, I'd stick them, stick them together and they breed. And if they didn't, I'd stick them together in a pillowcase and drive around the block and they'd breed when they got yeah. back. You know, and they're pretty simple. It was an annual event. You Maybe you cool them off a little, maybe you don't, it, and, and, it, and you do what you do. These guys are tricky. Okay. And so if you don't keep them below 55 degrees. I was just going to say, it's cool in here. You got to keep them. It's very well, cool. And so not all year round, but below 55 degrees for three months. Okay. That's their hibernation. They're down. You don't feed them. Everything goes chilly and they go to sleep essentially. And they get up and walk around, drink some water, but that's it. If you don't do that, they're not going to reproduce the next year. Okay. So they're recharging the battery, right? And, yeah. They go down and, and something about all of that triggers the sexual hormones to come up and be ready for breeding. So these guys just came out of hibernation. They haven't Incredible. had their first meal yet this oh, year. Wow. And so actually this Saturday, they'll get their first meal. I just turned on the lights and the heat. They're coming back to normal. And then I'll feed them for three months here, get, start pairing them up. And then the next puzzle of the whole thing is getting desert eggs to incubate for six months, which any incubator to let to go evenly for six months is a challenge. And what's weird is they're a desert animal, but they need 100% humidity and the water can't touch the egg. Yeah, or you'll get or mold. Kill it. Oh, unreal. So it's all tricky. I'm using a nice Coke machine. We're going to try to uh, you really know, set that up. The other cool thing, folks, is you notice he's also got a really cool eye for the aesthetic. And you got a lot of personality, John. I mean, <laughs> you know, we're using this old school Coke machine uh, like you would find at a Route 66 exactly. diner in the middle of the yes, desert. Sir. You know, You're I right. love it, dude. Uh, <laughs> this is this is a definitely an interesting guy. I'm loving this. Just all the art work too you're definitely obsessed oh, uh, no in a good way every Look coin with a heel of monster yeah that is really yeah, cool yeah. stuff man. All fun stuff. so if you guys go to the alligator farm and you want to schmooze this guy bring him a little tchotchke of heel of monsters uh, you're in yeah you're in you're in the farm you're gonna have a lot of people come to the gator farm now uh this is great i i think we've learned a great deal man and i appreciate you taking the time to do this and letting us in your uh heel den yes uh we should mention there's one other well Let's talk about this. Um, in, in you know, uh, historically, we have been taught that there are two venomous lizards on Earth: the yep. Gila monster and the beaded dragon, the beaded lizard. Yes, sir. Um, but that's not necessarily the case. We're finding out a little bit more. Well, so what do you say to that? It's all tricky. So. Uh, for a long time, everybody wanted to divide Gila monsters into two. There's a banded Gila monster and a non-banded Gila monster. And uh, even states were recognizing them differently. California claimed that they did, they only had banded Gila monsters, and so you could keep one and not the other for a while. And it was a big mixture of rules and regulations based around them. But genetically, it appears there's really only one species. Okay. So there's they, you can get a litter and have bandits and non-bandits in the same egg group. Cool. Uh, so that's one venomous lizard. Then on the wall here we have uh, the other beaded lizards. So these, there's at least these four other species of beaded lizards. And all of those were for a long time just considered subspecies of each other. But as of today, those are four different species. Okay. So now we've got so five species of venomous lizard. But then now we're really identifying, we've always said, well, Komodo dragons aren't really venomous. They've got the saliva and that yeah. kicks the tail of whatever they just bit and makes them miserable and they get sick and they die. But it's looking like maybe there is some venom component mm -hmm. here. And as you analyze down in there, it's not a big venom gland. Like with the rattlesnake, you can see this yes. big gland. With the Gila monster, it's in the lower jaw and it's these two are big venom glands. But these seem to be individual venom glands associated with each tooth. In the Komodo so dragon. So it's very hard wow. to analyze. It's very hard to get our, our mind wrapped around. How, you know, it's so different from everything else. Is that truly venom? And But I'd say the science is leaning towards, yeah, yeah. those are a venomous animal as 
well. There you go, guys. So we've learned quite a lot. And uh, what's fun about reptiles is we're always learning. No doubt. That's the cool thing. You are never done. So, uh, hey, man, go check them out at St. Augustine Alligator Farm. Say hello. Tell them Camp Cannon. You know, you watch the channel and the Cannon sent you. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you very much, man. Absolutely. Awesome. I learned a lot today. We'll see you guys later. Let me know what you guys think of this really cool Gila Monster den here at Casa Brugan. We'll see you guys later. I'm gonna go enjoy that pond. So long.